everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be drawing the shell of a volcano snail. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so here is um, the volcano snail. <laughs> They're um, pretty interesting. They uh, eat chemical soup at the bottom of the oceans. Um, in about uh, 750 degrees, so they make themselves armor. So they're basically dragons um, that look like snails. So we're gonna get started. Um, you can do them as all one color. There's several different colors that seem to be based on what chemicals they're absorbing and where they are at the bottom of the ocean. So there's some that are a little bit whitish, some that are a little bit muddyish some that are black, um, and then some have a mixture of colors in them, and so that's what we're going to do with this one because I thought that was interesting. We're going to do this grayish color for the shell with orange sort of mixed through, and then, um, you know, grayish and orange through the body, and then pink with its little head peeking out. Um, now when you're drawing a shell, you know, I usually draw a cross. It's a lot of work. Um, but the effect is really cool, and of course there's a lot of uh, spikes of orange through here, so that should also make it interesting. And I'm also going to go ahead and just shadow the shell while I'm adding highlights, or while I'm adding highlights, while I'm sketching it out. I already know the direction everything's going, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. That'll be easier to add in the highlights a little later. Um, so. All right, we're just going to start here and then this light pin pressure right now as we build this out. It'll also be easier to add the orange, um, doing kind of the same thing if we already have this established. Right, and so there's also that little spot where it comes on the other side of the head of the snail. And then we're looping it over, and this is where we have to be careful because we're running right against um, the edge there. It can be, this is where it gets a little harder doing this with a snail because they would have this nice smooth texture on their shells. And then, yeah, just that light pin pressure fully filling it in, right? So if I take off all the sketch layers, interesting start. I'm trying to follow um, the contour of the shell, right? We have these lines kind of bending in here. Following those lines with ours, that'll create the natural effect that you get with a snail shell in that um, there's already sort of this natural bend happening with lines going down it, so it looks like it matches up a lot of detail on this snail, so a lot of things to do. This will save us a step though, since usually, you know, I reserve adding shadows until after um, I've added another sketch layer. Um, we don't need to do that because we already have the lines kind of set. So there's no need for us to have to basically work twice as hard to do the same thing. I'm just going to run this right into the orange. And it'll be easier, too, doing it as gray instead of black. Because um, that's... Uh, drawing black on black is a possible, but it is a little harder to do. So it's not something that I necessarily seek out if I have ways to avoid it. Again, totally possible, but... Why do it when you don't have to do it? And I think the gray should work, especially with the orange that's sort of all mixed through here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around, sort of light pin pressure with the gray, and I will be right back.
All right, so there's the first part of the shell. And then we'll add the orange, and that should make it look um, even cooler. We're going to do this in shade, um, in shade, in uh, shadow as well. Um, so we have kind of this point where everything's rotating off, right? But it's just kind of jagged and in between. Trying to make sure it still kind of follows the same lines as it spirals out. So we have this section, and then of course we have all the individual sort of stripes going up. All right, so if we pop off everything, yeah, I think that'll work, especially once we add some highlights and shadows here. Just going to the center point, it'll be darker here, right? There's a dip at this center point, so this obviously will be in shadow. Um, but of course I'm doing the whole thing in shadow first, and then we'll add in the highlights to hopefully really make all of this pop. It's a little bit of work, which I already anticipated, because of the amount of detail. Um, luckily we don't have to be nice and clean on this edge because it was already kind of jagged. So on the edge where the, uh, you know, yellow, orange, I guess, meets the gray. Doesn't have to be a nice straight edge. Except a little bit here where it's actually shell sort of folding over on itself. So this middle point has to be a little bit more straight, just like it is up here, but where it's connecting to the gray, not as much. Right, so that, that line I have down the middle that's a dip all the way around. And we are stopping the line, so that actually should actually create a little bit of that effect already. I'll pop uh, the sketch layer off once I get this all the way around and we can see how that's affected it. Before we add in all the other spots, stripes. Right, yeah, you can see that line there. So yeah, that would be not as noticeable right now because we're just doing it in shadow. But once we have the highlights and shadows, it should make it much more um, definitively obvious that there's humps on the on the snail shell. Now I'm gonna add in the yellow. Now that I need just go where there's gaps. There's just enough gapping that you can kind of get a sense of where those um, spots are. You do want some, when I was drawing these, I decided to push some off the edge, you know, around and around the, the, sh the, the whew, words are hard, around the shell for the snail. God, my mouth didn't want to form those words. Um, because otherwise it'll look out of place, right? If it's only on one spot, unless it's like really concentrated down here, it'll look a little weird if it just completely disappears um, up top. It's one of those things you, you, you know, draw and add until it looks right. And once it looks right, you, you know, probably have it right. Even now I'm still adding some, changing some. This may look a little bit, well, may look, it will look uh, quite a bit different once we add highlights and shadows. The question is, you know, is this going to be too much once we add highlights and shadows? I think it should be okay, but something to keep in mind. Especially once we add, you know, um, 
down in here with its little shells. That'll help balance out some of this color on the shell itself. And again, pushing this off the edge. All right, now, almost looks like gold. <laughs> so, hmm. there we go. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go ahead and do the highlights before we finish out the snail. Um, highlights on the shell. So I'm gonna have the light source coming from above and to the right. You know, as always, it means it's above and in front of, so coming in right along here. Um, that's not behind or next to, because that won't be a really great great way to illuminate the subject. But all edges are in shadow, so we're just going to start filling in. Now, because um, I've already added shadows here, it won't take all that much to brighten this up. I don't have to add a lot of pin pressure here. I just have to add more lines because I've already filled it in. And then it's going to go down once it gets down into here. Sort of drops off. Right, because it's a big hump. So we just have all of this to do along the lines we've already done. And then tapering that off. Um, there's going to be some shadowing kind of as this lip comes underneath, but you're still going to have some highlights around that. Again, coming up to the edge, but not going off. Finding a good angle. Making sure that wherever I'm lessening out that pin pressure and the lines that we do it in sort of a nice tapered way. Don't want to create sort of that drawing transition from highlight to shadow. We want it to look uh, natural. Right, so down in here, we want this to kind of fade into that that it's not in highlight. And I'll probably come back through and add another burst of highlight. Um, we might do that in white after we get this sort of highlighted in. Um, just to give it the sensation, right, that it's wet and thus uh, shiny, naturally, as a result. And we're, we'll um, do this all the way around. There's going to be a bigger shadow, of course, um, on this back side than there is on the front. And then with the, the highlight that we'll add in with the white, that should really give it a good sense of, uh, of highlight and shadow. We could probably add a strip, you know, the light source coming from above and to the right, we can probably add a strip of white here and then another one matching it through here. That'll really give the sensation of how it's supposed to look. So right, it all kind of comes to a point right over here. So this would all kind of be up, but I'm going to work this over. And as we work it over, the shadow is going to be changing, kind of blending it in as well. Right, so we're now going to shift more towards the right, because we're on this other side. Um, allowing this to come over, though, and then sort of start fading out. Right, so this is building up. And then as we keep working our way over, we're going to keep shifting exactly where this highlight is because it's going to change as we um, bring it down, right? So it's weighted more this backside. 
But now we're starting to shift. So we're going to have underneath in shadow, right? So we have this just starting to sort of change that over. Keep bring that still kind of over, but down. And fading this underneath. All right, we don't want to draw trans transition, so making sure it's, it fades nicely. Following the lines we've already done. All right, so now it's um, solidly fade underneath, making sure we kind of do it across the same spot. And then as we work our way over, once again, we'll be weighted more towards the right, and it'll be like the, the left side that'll be um, back in shadow. Ooh, words. This is still all probably getting some highlight. It'll also look um, different once we add in right the highlights for the golder color this goldish so we're gonna have a pretty good shadow on this side but also still want to make sure we're lining this edge up so that one section doesn't um, deviate from another as we pull in this shadow to a different angle even if we bring in how far it's shadowed, we want that to line up. Right, because it not, won't necessarily be shadowed with the same amount that it was underneath. It could change depending on how the shell is shaped, but you want to at least line up so it looks like one smooth transition. You know, it's one shell, not different segments, because it wouldn't be. Right, and you get that kind of nice tapering that happens. We might have to taper a little bit more um, after we're done adding in these highlights. That should look nice though. Right, and we can pull, start pulling up how far that's going. Harder to see on the bigger one right now, well, partly because I've only done like two stripes of it, but um, but also because this is a much tighter spiral, right? So we're going to be shifting though again because this is now starting to to wind its way underneath. So under here would be shadow. So being mindful of how this is wrapping, but the back side's still in shadow too. So it'll be more kind of uh, in the middle through here, where you still have that back side in shadow, but now you also have this down here in shadow. So it hasn't quite twisted all the way yet. So I'm tapering it off my pin pressure as I bring this down. Also being mindful that, you know, the more lines I add, the brighter that'll get. So I need to be careful there too. Just like I was doing here, tapering that off as it connects into that middle part. And then that full pin pressure all the way up till you get towards the back and then tapering that off back up here. So you have that nice middle section catching the light. Give myself a little room to fade it. Alright, so I've done a better job of, of fading this in up here than down here, so I'm going to do just a little bit more fading this in. Just a matter of adding some light strokes to make it seem a little bit more natural a little too jarring at the moment. Nothing much, because I don't want this to 
brighten it up too much. Just need it to take kind of that edge off. And I'll have to bring this kind of around. And now I need to kind of balance out all the different shadows in relation to each other. All right, so if we back out now, hopefully, yeah, that did a lot. It looks nice and smooth. Now that this backside's a little jagged, I might have to fix that too, where I just am going to push this out just a little bit. So it actually rounds, yeah, instead of, you know, not rounding, which is what I did before. Yeah. Now that fix it, and you can see how smooth, how much smoother that shadow is here. That's what you want all the way around. Nice, smooth, natural-looking um, shadow following that that angle around. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add the highlights for the rest of the shell. Um, for the most part, you know, it, it'll be pretty straightforward from here, just following these lines, doing what we just did for the spiral. Um, and I will be right back. All right, so um, I was going to jump to the gold, but I'm going to fix one quick thing real fast. Just down here, we're going to brighten up the fade point because it's a little brighter already with the shadow of the, the gold just for the nature of it, but I don't want it to look out of place. and to fix where that line was hitting. So not much, just enough to brighten it just a smidge. And then we'll move on to the, I keep calling it gold, but it's like yellow. <laughs> Orange, I guess. It looks so much brighter already <laughs> than, the, than the gray. All right. And then make this line a little clearer too. It's rounding under for sure, but there's, you know, you have this sort of part jutting down that is on the other side of the snail, um, on the snail's head, right? It'll look more in place once we get the other in there. But for reference, right, this is coming into the head of the snail, so it's kind of tucked back and I just need to make sure it's that's indicated so it would be darker and it stops suddenly because it runs into the snail's head but this would be a little brighter than that I just want to make sure that's clear even if it's going into shadow all right now, I'm going to get this brighter color. Start doing the same thing, right? So down in here, it's still shadowed. And up in here, start brightening it up. Start brightening it up. Still have those edges. Now really brightening it up. And then, of course, we also have where it's um, connecting uh, back in here. But it should be relatively straightforward because we've kind of already mapped it out, right? It's already surrounded by the gray. 
I'm not, just like I wasn't with the gray, I'm not putting full pin pressure. And I'm actually being mindful of how bright I'm going because I don't want it to necessarily look out of place. So I need to be careful that it's balanced with, you know, the color around it, even though I do want it to brighten up. Don't want it to look like it's this bright beacon that doesn't necessarily belong. And then of course on the edges, it's in shadow till it kind of works its way out of that shadow. So it's just like that, that gray. Following the contours we've done. Right, and you can see it's faded on the edge and then it brightens up as we come out of there just like the gray does. So we wanna make sure we maintain that all the way around um, and to follow that, right? So where the gray transitions, right? We have this kind of line of highlight to shadow. It's a little subtle, but it's here all the way around. And so we want to follow that same line as we uh, are filling in the color here um, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of the ones on this loop before we get to the middle. I'll talk about that separately. So I'm going to do all the ones on this loop, sort of following that, following the highlights we've already done with the shell, and I will be right back. All right, so there we have um, the outer edge. Now we have this sort of middle loop here. So keeping in mind how it comes around, right? So we're gonna have some of this going into shadow. I'm just getting some of the tips a little bit in highlight where it's kind of connecting in, kind of going into shadow and anywhere it's connecting and brightening, brightening it up just that little bit. But it is kind of going down in shadow because it's going to that middle point. And then as it starts rotating around, we're definitely going to have some of the tips going into highlight because it's now pushing up in a different way. Right, so some of this is pushing up, going into highlight. going back in the shadow at the bottom, you know, and then we have certainly up in here, still going into a little bit of shadow as we come down though, right, we're coming down so going into shadow. Now we're definitively kind of twisting underneath, so we need to make sure we're matching what's happening with the gray as well. Some highlighting. Well, and by some highlighting, I mean we're, we're using it to help fade, but otherwise, you know, it's going into shadow here. At least on this side. For the most part. Right, so it dips down. Keep that kind of dark. Alright, so now we have this part. We need to do kind of the same thing. Right, it's dipping down, but on this side it's going a little bit more, matching the gray. Um, but, you know, it's, it's kind of popping out a little bit where the light would be catching it. So some of these tips would be nice and bright. Some of them not as much. But anywhere it's connecting, that full like brightness probably would be before fading. Right, especially because it's rounding up, so it's gonna be catching that light before it goes into that kind of middle section. Not as much through here, maybe a little bit on some of these tips, but I 
Likewise here, you know, you have it's rounding down, but anywhere the gray's connecting in, we're probably gonna have just that little bit of burst before it rounds down. And then here we have kind of that tip that rounds over and in. To give it a sheen, I'm gonna take white. Of course we're gonna save it. All right, so we have kind of a good a good concentration. We certainly have the highlight that's looping around with the shadow definitively there. So to give it a sheen, we're gonna take this white and make stripes of white. All right, so we still wanna be able to highlight um, that there's lines. So I'm not gonna put a whole bunch together. I'm gonna have these stripes of white kind of indicating, you know, where the light's hitting it. So this is creating a highlight. Okay, so we're gonna have that on one side and then we're gonna pick it up again, just over here, much smaller. But same idea, right? We're still following that angle that we are on the other side. And then right in here as well. So several points where light's potentially really catching. This will help indicate, you know, it's it's wet. So light's catching it in a certain spot, and that there's multiple spots where it potentially be catching on that same kind of plane. And then um, fading it out. All right, so there is the snail shell. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit on this tip too. I feel like it would have that and connect that in. Yeah, and you kind of get um, the, the white can really add a lot, and you see how much that adds, right? We have nice evenly shadow, and then you add the white, and you really get a sense that there's this highlight on it. Um, so sometimes it's really nice. Even though the white isn't a color it has, it can be a nice burst to add to something. So, yeah. There we go. We'll do the rest of the snail uh, next week. All right, so that is how you draw the shell of a volcano snail. Next week, we'll talk about how to draw the rest of the, sh of the snail. Uh, they're pretty interesting. They sit kind of at the bottom of the ocean in 750 degree temperatures and eat chemical soup being served hot and fresh from when it was raining rocks or whatever. Um, so in the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all next Thursday for the rest of the snail. Take care.